All the time. And we all fixing to serve the Lord, man. I guess after Jim speaks. Good morning, everybody. I'd like to welcome everybody this morning. Um, I'm pretty fragile. Um, I told my motorcycle out, out yesterday, but killed myself. And so I'm all bruised up. Don't yank too hard. <laughs> yeah. Um, the reason I walked back here is because I was praying for you when that happened. I told you I've been praying for you. <laughs> I want you to know that. God's got something coming your way because he wants to stop that. The devil will distract us. He'll take our eyes off what's important. Don't you lose sight of that. He loves you. He's going to take care of you. you got grandbabies and babies, Grace. Yeah. Holy Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the message of this church, that you're real, that you live, that you're powerful, that you're strong, that you're mighty, that you're holy, that you're worthy, that you're almighty God from forever and forever, from the beginning to the end. Lord, we praise you and we thank you. We come to your courts with thanksgiving. We thank you for our lives. We thank you for our hearts. We thank you for the passion we have for you. Lord, take us to the places you would have us to go. It's written in your book where we will go. We will step into those places. Lord, take us there now. Take our spirits there. Help us to go there in our hearts. Get us there in our minds before our feet touch it. So we'll be prepared, Lord. Prepare us for the ministry you to have us to go into. Lord, uh, bless our hearts. Bless, bless us with a new vision that uh, you've had from the beginning of time. Open up to us so we can see. Take away our blinded eyes. Open up our deaf ears. Lord, teach us the words to speak. Take away our loose tongues. Take away uh, the things that would prevent us us from stepping into your hope and your vision and your eternity. Lord, you said that uh, uh, let it be on earth as it is in heaven. In heaven we're whole. In heaven we're healed. In heaven we're free. In heaven we're powerful. In heaven we're uh, uh, the angels are amazed at what you've done in us. Help us to be amazed in what you've done in us on earth. Yeah. Lord, bring us to your hope. Teach us a new song. Teach us a song of everlasting, a song on earth that they would sing in heaven, Lord. Uh, bring us to new realities of everything you'd have us to be. It's through Christ I pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank 
Yep, nothing will. That's right, amen. Um, well, we hope you've all had a blessed week. Because I know we have. Praise God. God is good. Doesn't matter the struggles you go through. He's always good, amen. All right, this one y'all can sing with us now.
is spreading like a wildfire in my heart. Sunday morning, hallelujah, and it's lasting all week long. song for the Lord. You know, praise the Lord. We've got a good, good God, and he's worthy to be praised, you know, because it don't matter what you're walking through. I promise you, God's got your back, and if God's got your back, you ain't got nothing to worry about, praise the Lord. But, you know, sometimes, sometimes people begin to feel like God's stepping away from you. Maybe, maybe some of you in here have felt that at times. I know I felt that at times. I felt that at times where, where I feel like God just kind of steps back and, and stops talking to me, you know, and, and I have to kind of wait patiently for him to, to step on out. But, you know, sometimes we do things ourselves and we, we get off of that straight and narrow path that God wants us on. But, you know, just like that good shepherd at, that watches over his flock, you know, if that one sheep, wanders off that shepherd's going to do whatever that shepherd needs to do to be able to find that one sheep and it's just like you when you stray god leaves everything else that he's doing to come find you because he loves you that much everybody in this house today is loved everybody in this house today has purpose and he will leave that 99 to come looking for you. He's right there with you. It doesn't matter what you're going through, whether you're feeling, whether you don't. He's right there with you. But 
gone when I fear I'm on my own You remind me I am not alone When you said I'd leave 99 Leave them all behind to find is always good to us no matter when we're not good he's still good amen amen when we're sick he's faithful to help us through it if you ask him because god's always there for us and you know th those the things that you say like that it's not a cliche that's true, yeah, that's true. That's right. because you know sometimes uh church people get so jaded you know they think they know everything about <laughs> what's been said about God, but they don't. We don't. We don't. Because, you know, uh, I've, I've found myself there before, you know, um, thinking that, well, I've heard all this before, but it doesn't matter. You need to hear it. I need to hear it. It doesn't matter uh, because when you're sick and you, if you, God's word says all you have to do is have faith and believe. And if you do, and he's going to heal you. He's going to rescue you. But you've you, you got you to have faith and believe it. If you don't believe, you might as well be talking to the wall. So you, you got to, to, to believe what the Lord's Word says. Amen. And you know, over all these years of me serving the Lord the best I could, I mean, I've, uh, I've come to realize when, when I believe it, whatever it is that I'm asking the Lord for, you know, I'm, I'm going to get it. He'll give us the desire of our heart, you know, and, and the desire of your heart is for 
people that you know to have salvation, for, you, for people that you know to be healed, for, you, for yourself to be healed, have salvation. You know, that's what, he's, that's what he's wanting from us. He didn't say, if you have a desire to win the lottery, I'm going to let you win the lottery. That's not what he's talking Dang about. It. He's talking about his kingdom. Amen. And the Lord just impressed me to, to, to say that to all of y'all because some of you are, are asking him things uh, that is not in his will. Well, I've done it. Everybody's done it. You know, it's something stupid. You know, Lord, I really need that. I need that. Let me have it. That's not what he meant. He'll give us salvation and he'll give us healing. He'll give people that you know and pray for salvation and healing. That's what he's talking about. You know, we're supposed to serve him and seek him first. And his word says he'll add everything unto us. So God is good. And I just had to get that off my spirit. Amen. Sometimes God has to put us in a place or sometimes we even have to ask God to put us in that place so that so that he can come in and he can be your everything. Because when God is your everything, you don't have to worry about tomorrow. You don't have to worry about your situations. Because when you make God the center of your life, you can trust and know that God's plan is better than anything that you could ever imagine. If there is anything here today that is keeping you from being able to hear what God has for you today, if there's any burdens that you've got on your heart, 
anything that you walked in the door with that's keeping you from being able to praise and to worship God and to hear what God has to say to you, now is the time to lay it down. Now is the time to give those things to God so that He can look, so that He can take your burden. He doesn't want you walking around feeling heavy. He doesn't want you walking around feeling like you got the weight of the world on your shoulders. Because when you've asked God into your heart to save you, when you've asked Jesus Christ to be Lord of your life, you don't have to worry about anything. Because Jesus Christ then steps in and he says, you're covered by my blood. You're covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. Nothing of this world can overtake you. Nothing of this world can beat you. But we've got to let things go and we've got to give them to God. We've got to let God have them. As hard as those things may be, we've got to trust and know that God's got us. God wants to set you free today.
shine But God will call me He knows will be Father is always good to us, and that's what we're going to sing a song of worship to him called Good, Good Father. That's the right one.
can hardly speak peace so unexplainable that I can hardly think as you call me deeper still as you call me deeper still as you call me deeper still into love 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 you're a good good father to you to you to you and I'm loved by you to I am to I am to I am you're a good You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. To us, cause you are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord today? Amen. Are you glad that you're in the house of the Lord today? Amen. Praise the Lord. Why do we come to the house of the Lord? Huh? Praise the Lord. Why did you come? Hmm? Praise the Lord. You know, I, I came to have an encounter with him. Hmm? I came to have an encounter with him because I got to know what the next step entails. I got to know where we're at. I mean, I've been at this for 32 years plus, And I know I can't walk in this world without having his guidance on everything I do. I mean, the, the adversary is out there trying to stumble us up, and we've been at this a while. I mean, we've been at this a while. How many has been saved for five years? How many has been saved for 10 years? How many is uh, 20 years? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Then we, we know that we've been at this a while. The main thing that I have gained in perspective of 32 years is that God wants somebody to walk with him. Amen. I'm telling you, God is looking for a people that will walk with him. To walk with him means you're walking away from, from the world and the reality of the world. <clears throat> you see, I don't know if you realize it or not, but there's, there's a greater... Vi invisible rim than they are visible rim. There's a greater invisible rim than there is a visible rim. And that's where when we walk with God and we don't know what to do next, then we have to stand in faith. In faith in what? Faith in what God has instructed us from the foundation of the world. 
I mean, he gave us a blueprint, but there's more to walking with God than, than, than just going by the blueprint. It's a great road map, and it'll get you in the vicinity. But you see, it'll get you in the vicinity of where you need to be. But you see, then John, 3, John chapter 3 comes into play that, that Jesus told Nicodemus eight times you have to be born again. I mean, you got a road map how to get to John 3, but then by faith, you've got to transition into the unseen realm and be born of the Spirit. I mean, if you go back to Genesis chapter 2, God formed Adam from the dust of the earth and breathed into him the breath of life, and God came down and walked with Adam in the cool of the day, so God walked with Adam. Then you have Enoch in chapter 5 of Genesis. We're going to start there. If you'd stand with me, we're going to pray first. Because I need, and you need, I need, and you need. Hmm? Hold up your hand to the Lord. Tell the Lord I surrender and I need. I need to hear a word from you. Because the way is dim, and I can't see what to do. I need you visible. I need your anointing to go forward that not only I be saved, but the ones I love see the difference in me. And they would want to be saved. 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 From the physical visible, visible realm. And to the unseen eternal, unseen eternal realm. Grant this petition. Because I asked it in Jesus Christ's holy name. Amen. Praise the Lord. May be seated. Praise the Lord. You know, to get the gist of uh, of the message today, we have to go back to to the uh, book of Genesis and and get close to the beginning because in the beginning God laid it all out. I mean, uh, it's tops and shadows all the way through. I mean, uh, you had the father send the servant Eleazar. Uh, you had the father send the servant into the world to find a bride for the son. You know, you can match that story with the story of Isaac, and you can match that story with the story of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit coming into the world to seek out a bride for his son. So you, you see the type and shadow of, in Genesis to the, to the book of uh, the New Testament, and you see that picture, and, and it's still the same same story. Jesus Christ is coming into the world. The Holy Spirit sent back to take out of the world a bride for his son. It isn't only about a bride for his son. It's about filling the kingdom of heaven. The halls of heaven are going to be filled with those that are bidden to come. Even after the rapture happens, there's going to be a remnant that, that, that understand that they must stand against all odds. That whenever God comes again, they're gonna, he's going to receive them in the courts of God in eternity. That the judgment of God will be fulfilled yes, sir. and the kingdom of God will be fulfilled. The kingdom of God would be fulfilled. If you go to Genesis chapter 5, and Carol's going to read in Genesis chapter 5, verse 21 through 24. You ready? Yeah. And Enoch lived 60 and 5 years and begat Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah 300 years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were 360 and 5 years. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Enoch walked with God, and God took him. 
If you understand, we've said it before and talked about it before in teaching, understanding how the, how the types and shadows, God's a sickler uh, uh, creator and its times and seasons and, and, and all his creation uh, has seasons and, and, and growth and, and maturity. and uh, You can't be a baby forever. You can't be a baby forever. You got to mature in in the knowledge of God in the supernatural realm. If you don't mature in the knowledge of God in the supernatural realm and walk with Him whenever you're called out of the world, then 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 you're going to be immature in your walk here, and, and your destiny is at question. Your destiny is questionable if you don't walk with God in the fullness of, of being born again. So here we have a dilemma. Here we have a dilemma. It's, it's the same type of dilemma that happened to the Jews. You see, when, when Genesis chapter 50 ends and Exodus be, begins, there, I, I think there's an and there. That and means that Genesis is continuing because the story of the captivity is, is not completed. So here you have the Jews that had came, 70 of them came out of, uh, out of uh, uh, Canaan or the promised land to Egypt where Joseph was. Joseph went before them and, and Joseph... The scripture says that Joseph, Joseph was 39 years old when the 70 came. When the 70 descendants of Jacob came to Egypt to be protected by Joseph and fed and nourished and that they might uh, prosper in Egypt. Prospering in Egypt is a picture of prospering uh, in a dark place. You see, the, the conflict of life sharpens us. The conflict of life sharpens us. You don't believe me? You ain't, it ain't done yet. You might be in a bad place right now, but you keep on walking with God. You're going to come out of it if you don't let go. I'm telling you, this is important to all of us. That we keep walking with God no matter what. Because... Trouble's going to come. Read uh, uh, Exodus chapter 1 there, the scriptures I gave you there a minute ago. Okay, Exodus chapter 1, verse uh, uh, 8 through 12. Exodus chapter 1, verse 8 through 12. Now listen, this is, this is Exodus chapter 1. This is after the bondage that had carried on for, for right at 400 years. Not all of it was bondage, but they were all out of the promised land in, in Egypt. Okay, go ahead. Now there rose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. And they rose up in our time, new leaders of the world. You see, we can't, that was the known world to, to the people that lived in the, in, in the Middle East. That was the known world, Egypt, Israel, Syria. Uh, uh, Mesopotamia, uh, uh, Chaldeans, and Babylon. That was the known world to them. So uh, here the Jews have, have come uh, to Joseph, a type of Christ, and, and he protected them and gave them the best of the land of Egypt called Goshen. And they took their herds and they, they multiplied there. They multiplied there. But you see, Joseph was 39 years old. And if you see, look at the end of, end of the book of Genesis there and the beginning of Exodus, you see that, that from, from 39 years old to the time Joseph died at 110 was 71 years. And it says that all the 70 that came to, to Egypt to be rescued rescued had passed away joseph was the last one go ahead and he said unto his people behold the people of the children of israel are more and mightier than we come on let us deal wisely with them 
lest they multiply, and it come to pass that when there falleth out any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us, and so get them up out of the land. Therefore they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens, and they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Potham and Ram, Ramus, Ramus, but the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew, and they were grieved because of the children of Israel. The world in our day is grieved because of the because of the uh, the church in 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 general. If you if you look at, at churches in other countries, you see that in Iran, it's where they're going to be the next war probably. Israel, Iran, and America, and then Russia and. And, and China and all these people, North Korea is going to join in in this global war. war. Uh, it could be Psalms 83 war. It could be Ezekiel 38, 39 war. The battle of Gog and Magog. But there's going to be a great war upon the earth in, in our time. And it's not far off. I don't. It could happen in 2019. This great war, is it's described in the book of Revelations, chapter 6 and verse 8. It says that this time, as this war rises on the earth and covers the whole earth, it's a global war. It says that one-fourth, one-fourth is going to die in this battle, in this war that we're going to see coming probably this year. It, I hope not, but, but possibly this year. And, and, and it's going to be bad. I mean, it's going to be the beginning of tribulation. There was a beginning of tribulation when the Jews had multiplied on the face of the earth. And the king, or the Pharaoh that knew not Joseph, the Pharaoh that knew not Joseph, Joseph came into power. And they feared the promise of God because God Almighty is sovereign over the whole earth. But you see, we don't see the, the working of God because it's the invisible realm that, that God deals with. Now, he interrupts the physical realm all the time. He does. Whenever, whenever Moses came to, to, to Egypt and, 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 and shared with the, the... When they left, it says, the scripture says, there was 600,000 men of war. That was just a, a summary that you could uh, uh, appraise and, and, and project the, the population of the, of, of the Jews when they were in captivity. If there were 600,000 men of war, if you just multiply that, that's uh, uh, 1,200,000, 12, 12, uh, right? A million. So they project that there were possibly as much as 3 million Jews in Israel, I mean in Egypt. The projection. And so for 3 million people, or 600,000 people for that matter, the call is walk with God. The call has been walk with God ever since God created man. When God came down as a voice, not in the physical, but as a voice presence, a spiritual presence with Adam and Eve, and walked with them in the cool of the day. So here, the same, the same scenario is, but God knows that man can't stand in the presence of an almighty God because we're sinful. And, it, and if we came into the presence of an almighty God, except there be some kind of grace that's applied like Jesus came, and that grace that Jesus came in was applied that gave us a bumper, a bumper from the judgment of God, We'd be consumed. So, so the, the thing that, that Moses came and told him said, God's visited me. And, and it's the same thing that God told Abraham. I believe it's in Genesis chapter 17. That, that, that the, the descendants of Abraham would go into another country and be in bondage for 430 years. Prophesied before it ever happened. Prophesied. Listen to me, This is important prophesied of God to Abram, Abraham before it ever happened. 
You know that in Isaiah 46.10 it says that he, be, he finished the end before he began the beginning. So where are, we going, where are we going with this? So there's a spiritual implication that what we, and if you go to Ecclesiastes, it says, think that there's nothing new under the sun. There's nothing new under the sun. Ecclesiastes goes on to say there's a time and season for all things. A time to weep, a time to mourn, a time to have victory, a time to joy, be joyful, a time to die. A time to die. What's death? I've told you, told you, and told you. Death is separation from God. Because once you was born, you'll never die. you never die. If God could have had a first thought, you were in it. You were in God before we ever come forth into the earth. So we, we came at a, at a time out of eternity that was pre-existing. It was before. And, and so we, we look at God as the God... The God that was? Huh? That's what you got in your Bible. The God that was. But you see, 2,000 years ago, Jesus came. And, and for them then, it was still the God that was for us. But you see, you got to step into John 3 and, and step over into the spiritual realm that God is now God. So you got to realize the sovereignty of God, and, and God has called each and every one of us. He's called each and every one of us out of uh, bondage, and the pictures of bondage is all through the Bible. The pictures of bondage is in, in every aspect. Bondage is, is sin. That's what bondage is. It's sin. It's disobedience to God. What is the obedience to God? What is the obedience to God? Walk with Him. Huh? Walk with Him. You, you see, Moses led, led the children of Israel to walk out of bondage. They, they went from, from bondage to walk out of bondage to walk through the Red Sea. If you think you... You can't walk into the promised land. That's what happened to them. They came out of bondage through the baptism of the Red Sea into the, into the wilderness. And then you know the story. Moses sent 12 spies out to spy out the promised land. You see, that is the same uh, mindset as, as God has sent, brought us out baptize us now we're in the wilderness but god's given us perspective that god has a promised land a, a a a spiritual place that god is because he's sovereign over everything and, and that that he's calling us out to the promises of god to be the bride of christ to be the children of god to be not only the children of god but to be the offspring of god that takes dominion and authority over the created angelic host that's scattered all over the world and the universe. You see, that's why the fall came. When Lucifer knew that God intended to have an offspring, us, and that we were going to be the dominant, uh, uh, the dominant uh, over, dominant over all of his creation. Lucifer said in his heart, you know, that I'm the first created angel. And I'm not going to worship man that was created after me. But you see, that was the pride that came into uh, Satan's heart, Lucifer's heart. It explains all that kind of in the book of Bartholomew. It explains it kind of in, in uh, Ezekiel 28 when God talks about uh, the thing that he had against Satan was that he trafficked it into the earth. That means that he st came into the earth and stole that what was laid up for his body, for his church, for you and I. And he's still a thief. He's still a liar. He's still a murderer. And he wants to murder you and me. He's mur murdered other people because they, they lived in the physical. And, and so when you get into the physical, you leave a door open that Satan can attack you. But if you walk in the spirit, you walk in power. 
You walk in newness of life because God is and he's saved and he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him, that walk with him. And, and by faith we can stand on the promises of God. The promises of God are yea and amen to those that would receive them. Yea and amen. There's nothing impossible that, that God couldn't give us or would give us if we come steward over it. You see, it don't matter how much you speak in tongues. It don't matter how much you dance and run here and there in the earth. He ain't care. I mean, he don't care about none of that. He's looking for someone to be faithful. Huh? If you, if you're, if you're speaking tongues and you're dancing and all that stuff and you're not faithful, then, then your walk doesn't line up with the walk that he wants us to walk in. It's a, a come out of this world and be you new. Be Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He wants you to be an example. That example, Jesus come and walked it out 2,000 years ago. That example of how that God came into this world, man, fully man. We were talking about that in Sunday school. God was fully man. If he wasn't fully man, he couldn't be the, the, the he couldn't be the, uh, he couldn't be the one that hung on the cross in our place. He couldn't. If he wasn't fully man. Man sinned, so man had to, to, to die because that's the curse. That because man disobeyed God, the punishment's death. Separation from God. Separation from God is death. So that answers the question of why Jesus on the cross said, My Father, my Father, why have thou left me? Because that, that punishment had to be fully recognized. And Jesus Christ stood on his own merit. Huh? The man Jesus Christ had to stand on his own merit and be crucified. But then... Then Jesus Christ in, in, in the spiritual realm, he entered into the spiritual realm when he had paid the sin debt, entered into the place uh, in the earth, and he took back the keys to death, hell, and the grave because, because he didn't have sin in him. So when, when the sinless Son of God paid the sin debt for us, he, he went into the earth and he, and, and he come forth out of the earth three days later. And, and the Bible says in Matthew 27, around verse 50, so it says that whenever Jesus rose to the dead, many of the patriarchs were saw walking the streets of Jerusalem. I'm telling you, the spiritual realm, the spiritual realm is the eternal realm and we're in time passing through the wilderness. Passing through the wilderness, here the Jews came out of out of uh, walked out of uh, bondage, walked through the Red Sea, and then they came face to face with the decision whether they could accomplish what God wanted them to do, and the gift that God had for them. Many of us are right there today. Many of us are right there today. I mean. We go look and see what the world has to offer. And there's a lot of things out there that, that are in competition for us and our faith and our knowledge of, of the spiritual eternal realm. There's a lot of competition out there for it, for our attention, for our children. I mean, and he's winning. He's winning in the physical realm. Because, but, you see, he's already won. God's already won in the eternal realm. It's up to us to walk out of the world into the, into the faithfulness and commitment that God requires of us to be his sons and daughters. I'm telling you, this is important. It's important. This invisible God has all power. Has all power. Go to Jude chapter, or Jude's only one chapter, verse 3. The book of Jude is right before Revelations. Verse 3 says, when Carol gets there, she can read it. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith. Earnestly contend. That means with all your might. All you can muster up. Contend for the faith 
in the unseen. You've walked out this far. You've been in this journey for a long time. You've got experience of failure. You've got experience of, uh, of uh, uh, walking with the devil. I mean, we got experience there. I mean, everybody knows what it's like to, to, to be incriminated by sin. And sometimes incrimination of sin sends us to, to a captivity of, uh, of in, imprisonment or something or addiction or something. So, so that experience is the experience that God is, is going to bring us through something. Huh? So... Jude is the brother of Jesus, half-brother of Jesus. And here, here he's come at writing an epistle, a little letter to encourage the church. Because when the church was birthed, I mean, you, you've all read Acts chapter 1 and 2 and 3 there. When, when, when the Holy Spirit came down and Peter preached his first sermon, the Scripture says 3,000 were saved automatically. Right there on the streets of Jerusalem. Then just uh, the turn about the, that day or the next day, 5,000 more was saved. So here we've got, we've got uh, testimony in, in, the, in the book. And so the church had birthed and is growing super, supernaturally. Just a few days, 8,000 members. What would you think about 8,000 8, members starting showing up here every day? Huh? Praise the Lord. I mean, the church is thriving. People are being born daily as, as the Lord saw fit. Why? I mean, how does the Lord see fit? I mean, brokenness. If you're, not, if you're not a broken vessel, God can't put you back together again. Because if you, if you don't understand it, that you can't, you can't please God in the flesh. I mean, the Bible says this flesh can't please God. It's an enemy of God. I mean, it wants its own way. I mean, we look in the mirror. I, I, was, I was listening to a guy preaching, and he said, I, I, I said, I've got a picture. He said this. He said, I've got a picture of the most evil person that ever born or ever will be born. i got a picture of him. And, and, and he had this picture frame. And so he, he told the congregation, he said, he said, this picture describes all of, uh, of evil and iniquity. And, and, and this picture, and everybody said, we want to see it. We want to see it. I mean, would you like to see the picture of the most evil person that's ever conceived to be born or will ever be born? Born in this world, born in this flesh. Huh? I mean, they all want to see it. He started, he handed, the, he handed the picture frame to the front row and handed it to that person in the front. And they handed it past each other and hand it back down to the congregation and hand it back down and come back up and hand it back to him. And everyone picked up the, the, the picture. Everyone looked at it. It was a mirror. Huh? It was a mirror. I mean, you got to crucify this flesh. You got to crucify this person that you become and, and, and present yourself a living sacrifice, according to Romans chapter 12. Present yourself a living sacrifice. Do you believe God can do anything? Huh? Do you believe God can save that person in that mirror? Huh? Do you believe God honors his word over his name? Do you believe God honors all that? You know, I was, uh, uh, I was uh, searching the scripture, searching the internet and everything, and, and, and come across a story about a, about a young man. It was in World War II in 1948. 1948, August. We're right here in August, ain't we? August 8th and 9th, 1942. This gentleman's name was... A-L-G-I-N, Elgin Staples. Elgin Staples lived in uh, Akron, Ohio. Is that the place? Ohio, is that the, uh, Akron, Ohio? You know, I was listening to Brian talking to Jeff out in the parking lot as we pulled up this morning. And Brian said, Brian said, you know, he worked for 
Firestone. Brian worked for Firestone. Well, in Akron, Ohio, uh, this young man in World War II uh, was born, and he lived out his life. World War II began, and, and so many people in his town in Akron, Ohio, had been in the military, went into, went into services, different services and everything, and had gotten killed in, in war, in World War II. They got killed. And uh, it was a high casualty uh, uh, war in American history and everything. And so here, uh, Elgin Staples uh, enlisted in the Navy. He enlisted in the Navy and became uh, a, a third class seaman a third class seaman and and so elgin uh went off he he received his orders to to report to to the to the naval base um it was in um He, he got on this ship and everything, but he, he reported, but before he reported, his mother and, and family knew, the, knew the, the, the danger of him going into the military because there's a lot of uh, carnage and everything uh, of everybody. And so before he left, him being a Christian man, young man, and so before he left, his mother uh, got him, went before the church, and, and, and they laid hands on him and prayed over him. You know, they laid hands on him and prayed over him. He went on off to war and wound up in the, in the battle of uh, Servo. Of the Servo Battle of the Servo S A V O Island, um, Servo Island. Help me with some of this right here. Now, this was a Mother's Day sermon I was I was uh, listening to here, and and they used this young man's testimony as an example. And he he was uh, in, on a ship in in the sea, and is at Servo Island, and it names the name of the ship that he was on. And so, um, as they went out to war, you have to remember that his mother laid hands on him and prayed for his protection and that, that, his, that her son would return home again after the war. He was and on so, the USS Astoria in early 1942. He was in the Battle of Sabo Island. Okay, Sabo Island. Sabo but he was, from, he was from uh, Akron, Ohio. He was from Akron, Ohio. Uh, he was the uh, first ship. Uh, he was in the first ship to engage Japan in battle at the Servo Island. At home, his mother was praying for him. He wanted to do his duty for his country. He, he having known many friends that had given their lives already in World War II. His mother, uh, his mother, before he left. Uh, left them uh, be, uh, being a Christian, laid hands on him, praying for her son, safety. Staples was uh, a sig signalman, third class. His ship came under the attack on August the 8th of 1942 and was sunk. Can you picture it? He w his ship was sunk. And as he went into the sea and, and, and rose up, um, Elgin found himself floating in the sea, holding on to his life vest. Can you picture it? A ship picked him up. The second ship that, that had picked him up uh, after boarding that ship was sunk also. Hmm? I'm telling you was sunk also. Uh, here Elgin is again in the sea holding on, uh, holding on to that same life vest. The sea by this time is, is uh, in real turmoil. By, by the night, he had been in the sea a day and a night, 
and, and holding on to that life vest, you know. And could you imagine being out in the sea with all the blood and carnage and all the sharks is infil- infesting the waters and everything? And here he's holding on to this life vest, floating in the sea with war going on, the other ships out there. Dry- I mean, you're trying to avoid getting run over by a ship. And so here he is uh, in the sea a second time. That's the ship that had taken him on board, has sunk also. Here Elgin is again in the sea, holding on to that same life vest. The sea by this time was really in turmoil. And as he was, he was there praying, Christian man praying, he happened to notice a tag, a label in the vest you know how they label your shirts label all these things well he noticed this label in his life vest and it said made by the firestone company in akron ohio the vest also had a number uh, the name of the company and a number now he's in the in the sea, and he's thinking that where where I am, uh, his his thinking that where I'm from, that's where I'm from. You know, he was from that same town that that life vest was made in by that company. It was the Firestone uh, Tire and Rubber Company, and so here uh, here he is, and he's reading that label. Uh, he's, he, uh, now he was uh, praying and holding, uh, holding on for time uh, for God to help him, praying for God to help him. Now uh, communication at that time was, uh, had reached his mother that he was lost at sea. He was lost at sea. So she was praying and praying for God to find uh, uh, Elgin. For her, I'm sure she is praying hard, you know, and I'm sure he was praying hard too. Could you imagine? I've been in that place praying, Lord, please deliver me, please help me. I'm telling you, how many know God's all powerful? How many know that God prepares our way before we even get there? I mean, he, said, he, he prepared our way for 2,000 years and before that because we were in Christ before he formed the Adam in his own image. So God has it all in control. So why would we look for, for a Savior somewhere else? I mean, we need a Savior. I can't save myself. I've got experience to know that I didn't have power over my addictions. I didn't have power over, over my mind, over my body even. I mean, I didn't have power over even the decision I'd make because I'd make a decision this morning and it would change by the afternoon. I'm telling you, you've been there. I've been there. Only God. Say it, only God. Only God can help us. After the battle was over, the people were picked up. They were floating, hanging on to whatever uh, they could. Elgin was one of the survivors. Now, let's picture this. Elgin was one of the survivors. When he got home, when he got home, his picture was in the local paper he got his uh, mom's, uh, he, he got to his mom's, he, he began to tell her. Can you imagine him getting saved, getting out of the, the, the Navy, uh, going, to, going back home to his mom's? And, and, and so he begins to tell her the testimony of how that he was floating in the sea. The ships had been, two ships had been sunk out uh, out from under him, and he was in the sea, and he was praying for God to save him. And his mother on, in America, his mother in Ohio, is there praying, God save my son. God save my son. And he, he tells his mom, 
uh, he begins to tell her how the life vest that saved him uh, was made in, in his hometown. He, he tells her, he says, you know, uh, I noticed as I was floating in the sea this life vest, and it was made in my own hometown. And, and uh, he knew of the plant there in Akron, Ohio. And so he, he began to tell her, uh, and, and they had given him the vest because it was his lifesaver. You know, so they had given it a token. Uh, uh, you know, I've got the pipe that hit me in 2004 in the garage at the house, a big piece of pipe that fell 30-some foot and hit me. I've got it at the house. And so I can just imagine, because I can relate to it, he, he took this uh, life vest that was made at a company in his own hometown home with him, and as he's standing there testifying uh, about, the, uh, about the vest and hands it to his mom, uh, he, he says that the Navy gave him the vest for a keepsake. Uh, his mom began to cry. This is a true story. This is a true story, church. You get the gist of it. She took the vest from Elgin as she looked at the label. She had begun to tell Elgin that she had taken a job. (laughs) She had took a job during the war effort. She took a job. James, you got something? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah. As she began to tell Elgin that she had taken a job with the factory to help the, the war effort, she pointed out to him as she cried the number on that life vest was her employee number. She had made the vest Elgin had hanged on to a true story. She told her son that company made thousands and thousands of life vests. Do you get it? God's looking. God's looking. Everywhere, stand with me. God's looking in the earth. God's searching to and fro in the earth for somebody, for anybody that will walk with Him. He may be even whispering in your ear right now, will you walk with me? You know, whenever, October 12, 1986, I was sitting about halfway back in the church. You know, the pastor was preaching, but the Holy Spirit was talking to me. The Holy Spirit was talking to me. And he said, today's the day. Today's the day. Maybe, maybe you're hearing the Holy Spirit say to you right now, today's the day. I've walked all this way listen this is god the holy spirit saying to you he's saying i have walked all this way just for you
I've prepared you coming in. I've prepared you going out. I've prepared your victory if you'll just accept it. Your victory's prepared. It's, it's, it's completed. Jesus said on the cross, the last thing he said was, it's finished. He said, into thy hands I commit my spirit. And he gave up the ghost. So he prepared this day. He prepared it before he ever began the beginning because he, he, it's not his will that any should perish, but that every single person born of a woman would come to this place like you are today. And he's saying, don't be ashamed of me. I'm not ashamed of you. He's saying, come today. Today is the day of salvation. You see... He's the God of the past. He's the God of the past. He's the God of the then, 2,000 years ago when Jesus came. And he's the God of now. But you see, it don't end there. He's the God of the future. He's the God that will take you all the way. You know, we don't have to do anything particular except get up every day and know whose we are. Walk it out. Don't be stumbled up. We are experienced. We know the tricks of the devil. How that he can he can tempt you with this and tempt you with that, tempt you with everything. And, and this flesh you have to contend with. It's like that mirror. It's like that mirror you're looking into. That's the one you got to overcome. That's the one you got to overcome. You don't have to overcome the world. You don't have to overcome the, the, the friends or the people that are out there doing this or that. You don't have to overcome none of that. You just got to make the decision. This day, this day, I'm taking control of this flesh. I can't do nothing about what anybody else does. I can't do nothing about nothing that anybody else does, but I sure can make a decision today because you came into my life. I couldn't do it till he came into my life. You can't do it till he comes into my your life. And you see, coming into your life is not, not necessarily the key. The key is that you give yourself to him. He gave himself for you. Then in our turn in turn, we're to give ourselves back to him. I mean, we do it all the time when we dedicate babies. We say, God, you gave to us this child, this life. Now we know we can't raise it right, so we give it back to you that you can help us to do the right thing by that child. That's how it works. Every head bowed, no one looking around. Every head bowed, not looking around. You see, you might have a testimony like that you don't even realize yet. Someone prayed for you a long time ago. Someone's still praying for you now. You see, when, when a person prays and everything, maybe they, maybe they su uh, su surrender to, to, to passing into the spiritual realm. But you know, the Bible says their prayers continually go up before God. Those prayers never end. They never quit going up before God. They're praying for you. Maybe that's the day right now. Maybe this is the day. October or August, uh, August the 4th, August the 4th, 2019, this could be your day that you had an appointment with the Creator God that created all things. We say, Lord, if nobody looking around, every head bowed, would you say, Lord, help me. Come into my life. I want to be saved. I want to be rescued. If you just say that, to the Lord right now and slip up your hand saying, Lord, that's me. That's me. I want to be rescued. I know you sent a life vest for me. You sent a life vest for me. And the label, the label is, is the heavenly provision. And you know what? It's got his, his number in it. It's got his number in it because he sent that life vest for you. I've seen numerous. We'll slip them up one more time. One more time. Over three-fourths of this. Okay, you can put them back down. Over three-fourths of this congregation right here raised their hands. Look up here at me. 
Over three-fourths of this congregation right here lifted their hands. That's me, Lord. You understand what you're saying? That's me, Lord. I know that you sent a Savior, a life vest. His name is Jesus in person. Whatever, whatever form you take, Lord, rescue me. I want you to pray with me this prayer. I want everybody praying. Dear Lord Jesus, forgive me of unbelief. Forgive me of a life that's not been serving you. I want to enter into the promise that you've given us from the foundation of the world. I want to have it. I want to live by it. And I want you to direct my path. Help me to follow you as you show me how. And I do surrender everything to you to be born again. That's the requirement. And I give it to you to perform and help me do my part. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Now listen, I don't know who, I don't know who or what you're going to do when you leave here. I don't know what you're going to do with tomorrow. I don't know what you're going to do with the rest of the day. But I want you to go thanking God. I want you to go, I want you to have a thankful heart of what God's done for you today. Because by faith you receive everything God has for you. And you know what the, what the Bible says that will be one of the downfalls of the last days? There will be an unthankful people. I want you to go today realizing that the eternal unseen God has visited you today. Really. I mean, just like the miraculous thing that happened in this true story, Elgin Staples went off to the Navy. <clears throat> Ever how long it is, I don't think it states it in the story there, but you can find his story. Uh, it's in the, in the military magazines of that time because it was a story that impacted the United States. The miraculous thing God can do because this, this young man went off to war. I don't know how long it took him to get on that first ship. I don't know how long it took his mother to wind up working at Firestone, making vests. I don't know what time frame transpired from that vest leaving his mother's hands into the vein. I mean, it, it, that vest, like many other vests, no telling how many vests she had made and how many vests had that number on it. But it, it made its way into that vein. And it went on a path to find her son. That vest went on a path to find her son. And that vest found her son contending, contending. Jude said, contend for the faith. I tell you what, when you're facing drowning in the sea, the shark infested waters, he was contending for his life. But on the opposite side of the, of the world, in America, his mother was contending for her son's life. But that vest found its way to the ship. Carol read the name of the ship in a battle against Japan and found its way to cover her own son because God answers prayers. Hmm? God answers prayers. And the greatest sin that we'll ever sin, the greatest sin that we'll ever sin is unbelief. The greatest sin we'll ever sin is unbelief. I'm telling you, walk it out. I believe that God is. 
So I'm committed to walk with him. I'm committed to walk with Jesus. I'm committed to, if I see somebody on my path that needs a drink of water, I'm committed to give that drink of water. If I see somebody on my path that's hungry, I'm committed to feed them. If I see somebody naked, I'm committed to, to, to give them some clothes. If I see them in prison or sick, I'm committed to visit them. Huh? Huh? If I see them a stranger, I'm committed to take them in. Huh? Huh? Because the Lord says in Matthew 25, when they said, when did we see you in this way, Lord? And he said, when you saw the least of these, my servants, my my." When you saw the least of these in these conditions and you did not do it for them, you did not do it for him. That's the word. I believe it's the judgment. And I ask you, I ask you to be committed because Jesus said, I'm going to build my church upon the statement that Peter made that, that, that he is the church. He is the rock. We're building stones in his church. I want you to be faithful because your testimony is what they're going to see. Not, I mean, not your testimony, but how you live your life is how they see. If your life doesn't line up with Jesus, then you need to work on it. Because Paul said you have to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. If you look at the example Jesus gave me, if you look at the example, thank you, honey. If you look at the example that uh, Jesus gave us, then, um, you know, and, and you're see, you see something in your life that doesn't line up with that, it's your responsibility, not his. I mean, if you keep your mouth shut, his hands are tied. It's all over dominion. We gave that dominion to Satan. But Jesus brought it back to us if we'll have it. If we'll have it. You want this back? Logan. Logan. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this opportunity you give us to speak. The opportunity you give us to come before you and praise you. Magnify your holy name. Man cannot live by bread alone. But by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. And that word today is walk with me. Walk with me. Enoch was the seventh from Adam. Seven is a picture of the rapture. You want that back? Hmm? Okay. Okay. Father, we thank you. We pray you go with each of us today. Help us to be more like you tomorrow in Jesus' name. Amen. This is Jesus.